Okay, hi there. Hopefully a much shorter video today uh, where we're going to be removing the primary chain, the shock absorber unit and the engine sprocket. Okay, and to do that we're going to use some special tools. The first tool <clears throat> we're going to use is this fantastic piece of equipment which is a primary chain locking tool. Now, what we've got to do is undo these two nuts, the uh, shock absorber nut and the engine sprocket nut. Well, of course, when we turn that, what tends to happen is, of course, the engine just turns with it. And unless we can lock uh, in some way the engine, then things are just going to keep turning and you'll never get the nuts undone. So what this fantastically clever piece of equipment does is sit in between the sprockets and locks them solid. <clears throat> I'll, just, I'll just do that now. Right, there it is in place. See, it's toothed and it just simply sits between the teeth of the uh, shock absorber sprocket and the engine sprocket and locks everything solid. So we can now undo these nuts or, of course, later on, do them back up again uh, without worrying about the engine or the gearbox turning and not being able to tighten or loosen the nuts. Now, this, as they say in the ads, this piece of equipment is not available in the shops, only by direct mail order. This is actually just made by an enthusiast, uh, Andy Priest, and I'll put his contact details in the blurb that goes with this video, uh, so that if you if you want one, they're available for T150 Tridents, Rocket 3s, and T160s, yeah, and T160s, I think, with uh, a primary chain conversion to duplex. So I think they're available for all uh, models uh, of, uh, of triple. Uh, and such a great bit of kit. So it's locked. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the next kind of special tool, which is this one, which is a 15, yeah, 15 sixteenths, 15 sixteenths AF socket. Okay. And that, and extended, a long socket. And that's to undo this nut here, the shock absorber nut, which is done up, I think, it's very tight. I can't remember offhand. It's done up to about 70 pounds uh, torque, foot, pounds foot of torque. And it's long because obviously you've got the clutch uh, pull rod here. And so it fits over that so you can undo that nut. And then I've got a 5 8 width uh, socket to undo the engine sprocket. Now, to be quite honest, I'm not sure that's the right size, but it's one that I've got that fits, so I'm going to do it. And the best piece of kit for all, I've got a cordless um, power uh, power, oh, I can't think of it, you know, you know what it is. Go on, Bennett, my brain won't work, but it's one of those uh, cordless uh, ratchet uh, tools. So I'm just going to use that, boop, boop, and it will take those nuts, those nuts off straight away, because they're both done up really tight, they're both locked tighter, they're always a pain, but with a, a cordless uh, impact driver, hmm, brain's finally got engaged, then it's absolutely easy. In fact, it's so easy, to be honest, sometimes you don't even have to lock the engine. It's such, ooh, such powerful that it actually can undo those nuts without even locking the engine. You know, after years of hugely elongated spanners and all sorts of Tommy bars, honestly, just a fantastic thing to buy. This is quite expensive. This is £160, I think. But you can get cheaper ones, 18 volt. Uh, and again, this bench is the best thing I ever bought. And this is the second best thing I ever bought. Okay. Uh, so then we're going to undo those two nuts. And last of all, the engine sprocket, we're going to pull that off now. Sometimes that's jammed on the, the taper of the crankshaft. And so there are handily two threads there. And what happens is we screw in this extractor and that will pull the sprocket off if it is jammed on. Okay. So it's an orgy of special tools, kind of. Uh, locking tool. 15 sixteenths, 3 eighths width, um, cordless impact driver, Ooh, getting there, and the uh, engine sprocket puller. Okay, so the first thing, of course, I'm going to do is to uh, take the tab washer off the engine sprocket, and then I'm going to uh, remove those two nuts. If I can, I will film it. Okay, I'm going to try and live uh, live film this with one hand. So it'll go wrong. Uh, so don't forget, this is done up to about 70 pounds, 70 foot pounds at all. It's damn tight, this thing. Uh, pitched up against my DeWalt 
with one hand. She's probably breaking her wrist or something. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Let's see if it'll work. And there it goes. Off. There you go. Straight away, just with one hand, 70 pounds torque and lots and lots of Loctite and it's off. Not bad, huh? Now, uh, I'm not going to pull it off because that is an oil seal. Uh, and that stops oil traveling down the clutch pull rod into the clutch. The clutch itself is dry. You don't want oil in there. Now, this, uh, this seal faces outwards. So if I pull it out over the thread of the clutch pull rod, I will damage the seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... It's already started to come over the thread. To be honest, I should probably replace it anyway as a matter of course. Uh, but what I'm going to do is, so just trying to get it off there, I'm going to put, uh, there is actually a special tool for protecting that thread. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, masking tape over the thread and then pull the nut off and, and attempt to protect the oil seal. But in practice, I should probably replace the oil seal anyway, just for peace of mind. There we are. I'm just uh, pulling this off now. I've got the... Uh, uh, tape over the thread and so I'm pulling this off it'll probably bring the tape off with it that's okay uh, and so I've managed to withdraw the uh, the oil seal or the nut with the oil seal in the middle without damaging it as I say I'll probably uh, replace it anyway and, and you can see it's all uh, obviously it's done up because there's no lock nut on this nut uh, there can't be a lock nut so it's done up with high uh, uh, high density uh, Loctite okay and there we go in about five seconds using the same method uh, with the gun the uh, engine uh, sprocket nut is also off uh, and so we're going to take the tool out and then just pull the uh, the chain off uh, the only thing it being as I say if this sprocket is tight then we use the puller to take the sprocket off and there we go Easy as pie, the uh, primary uh, chain slid off the shock absorber. For some reason, on mine, it doesn't uh, it doesn't stick, so it just slid straight off. So that's the engine sprocket, and that's the shock absorber. We'll take these apart and we'll examine them uh, later on. But I'm just taking things apart for now. So I didn't need to use the puller, and so then this is what's left. We've got the oil pump here with the idler uh, drive for the oil pump. This is a, a, an extra feeder for the primary chain, which was uh, on the T150, which they discontinued for the T160. But that's, uh, well, that is, there's a little catch, oil catch there, and it's supposed to run down, add oil to the primary chain. Okay, we're going to leave it there uh, for today to keep things nice and short. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll take it. We'll just take these off next and then remove the inner uh, chain case cover, which will then give us access to the clutch uh, behind there. OK, there we go. Oh, one last very important thing I forgot to mention was that you need to check uh, to see if there are any shims behind the engine sprocket. Uh, these the shims are used to line, align the primary chain and the alignment is done by adding or taking away shims from behind the engine sprocket. I know there are no shims on mine uh, so I don't look for them but obviously when you take it off check you don't there are shims and they don't it's very easy for them to get lost because they stick to the back of the engine sprocket and then fall off so uh, check for check for any shims there.